From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. Netherlands to adopt RPKI. The Dutch government plans to transition to resource public key infrastructure standards by the end of 2024 in an effort to improve the security of its internet routing. This will use digital certificates to secure BGP, protecting against malicious or accidental rerouting of network traffic. The country's standardization forum mandated all communication devices managed by the government must make this transition by the end of next year. 77.9% of Dutch government sites already use RPKI. According to NIST, however, global adoption lags behind, with only 41% of verifiable IPv4 prefix origin pairs complying. For some context, that marks an increase from 33.5% at the start of 2022. Widespread backdoor installed on WordPress sites. GoDaddy's Securi security team published details on a campaign to install Balada injector malware on WordPress sites. The campaign dates back to 2017 and surfaces in waves every few weeks. The malware targets theme and plugin vulnerabilities, injecting freshly registered domains to create random subdomains pointing to scam sites. The malware attempts to create faked admin users for the site to harvest data and establish persistence. It's estimated the malware infected over 1 million WordPress sites. Tracing leaked Pentagon documents. Eric Toller of Bellingcat traced the leak of U.S. Justice Department and Pentagon documents online, some of which the government designated as top secret and involved the invasion of Ukraine. Toller found evidence these documents first posted as early as January on a Discord server, but may have appeared online before that. Toller spoke to some on the Discord server that the documents were originally posted on a now-deleted server earlier, but he could not confirm it. From there, the documents spread to 4chan. In March, they made their way to Telegram channels and Twitter, where the New York Times and other media outlets picked them up. Twitter lifts limits on Kremlin accounts. The Telegraph reports Twitter removed its restrictions on Kremlin-linked accounts, including for official accounts for Russian President Vladimir Putin. These accounts now show up in search results, timelines, and the For You feed. In April 2022, Twitter said it would not amplify or recommend government accounts belonging to states that limit access to free information and are engaged in armed interstate conflict. These restrictions were a direct response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and implemented against Kremlin-linked accounts the same day. And now a word from our sponsor, App Omni. Can you name all the third-party apps connected to your major SaaS platforms, like Salesforce, Microsoft 365, or Google Workspace? What about the data these apps can access? After all, one compromised third-party app could put your entire SaaS ecosystem at risk. With App Omni, you get visibility to all third-party apps and SaaS-to-SaaS connections, including which end users have enabled them and the level of data access they've been granted. Visit appomni.com today to request a free risk assessment. Microsoft adds registry preview to Power Toys. Microsoft offers its Power Toys as a free set of utilities for Windows. It recently added a new utility called registry preview. Like it says on the tin, it lets users preview registry files prior to import. This gives users a graphical view of a registry file and easily allows for comparing the new file to the current registry values. Microsoft released Registry Preview as, well, a preview, so you have to toggle it on in PowerToy settings to use it. How LockBit Changed Ransomware In 2022, the LockBit Ransomware Organization accounted for 44% of all ransomware attacks launched. The organization itself launched back in 2019. Security Intelligence looked at how the group rose to such ubiquity in the threat landscape. It notes that while LockBit wasn't the first ransomware-as-a-service operation, it engendered trust with its affiliates that it uses to execute attacks by putting them in charge of negotiation and payments. Combined with a rapidly improving malware stack, LockBit services maintained a high demand among threat actors. The group also embraced a more professional approach, making calls for academic papers on dark web forums, creating easy-to-use dashboards to onboard less technically savvy clients, and even launching their own bug bounties. NPM spam causes DDoS. A new report from Checksmarks documents how threat actors made the NPM repository unstable with what effectively became a DDoS attack. This used malicious websites to publish empty packages, pushing the number of package versions on NPM up 77% in a very short period of time. These packages carried links to malicious sites. So it doesn't appear these packages were meant to take NPM down. Instability just came from the sheer glut of automation. 
Checksmarks recommends NPM integrate anti-bot spotting techniques for account creation. Private tweets appearing in your For You timeline. By design, the Twitter Circle feature allows users to publish tweets only viewable to a select group of followers. It would appear to be a bug, users report seeing Twitter Circle content in their public For You feed. According to TechCrunch's Amanda Silberling, these posts showed the retweet button disabled and clicking through made the content disappear. This comes after users reported a bug in Circle last month where content posted didn't carry the typical green banner to indicate private publishing. We've got an exciting week of the CISO series podcast for you. Today, we just published our latest episode entitled, Our Security Tools Can Do Everything But Mitigate Risk. It looks into if redundant functionality in security tools is a good place to start cost cutting rather than looking at staff reductions. Look for it in your podcast app of choice. And then we're going to be having a live audience recording of the CISO series podcast on April 13th in New York City. For more information and to register, head to our events page at CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.